Good afternoon, Ben Jacobson here with a quick, uh, more of an, an initial impressions on the Fuji XE2. Uh, that's also the 23mm 1.4, uh, and next to it you can see the Fuji XE1 that I've been shooting uh, for six months now. Uh, it's got the 14mm on it, and here at the side of the frame I also have the 18-55 to 55, uh, kit with me. Um, so I just wanted to walk you through a few things that's new with the XE2 uh, that they've changed. Um, for starters, you can see the 14 or the 23 millimeter um, is pretty girthy. It actually makes the camera sit back on the table a little bit. Um, it's a very large lens for a compact system lens uh, camera system, uh, but it's a very small lens in terms of a 35 millimeter. Uh, you know, the, the full frame version I have is four times that size probably in, in volume. Um, so depending on what you're after, it might be, you know, grossly huge to you or very small. It all depends on what you're looking at doing. So uh, we'll keep that out of this for the most part. Um, I'll show you the clutch real quick. So it is in, let's get it to here. That is autofocus mode and then that is manual focus mode. And you can see the markings are there. They are much smaller. The aperture spread is much smaller as it would be on a longer focal length versus the 14 millimeters. Um, but that's just the nature of the beast. Um, it's got the aperture ring, same as the other, all the other X-mount lenses, uh, as does the 14. Um, so that's about it for that. So let's dive into the XE2. Let's turn it on. And the first thing you'll notice right away when you play with one is the on off switch is very firm, whereas the XE1 is very uh, easy to move, let's say. So, and what is this doing? It's in manual focus mode. Okay, so you have XE1, XE2. Now, you might wonder why there's a picture of my daughter on the table down there. And that is one of the new features of the XE2. It has uh, face detect autofocus. Now, it's really cool, and hopefully you can see it in the screen here, um, but it's locked on her face right there. And if I pan to here, it follows her face over. It's locked on her face. Pan all the way over to here, it's locked on her face. Put it way in the down corner, locked on her face. It follows it everywhere. Um, now, it needs, from what I've determined, two eyes, a nose, and a mouth looking at it. Uh, meaning if my daughter or my wife, any, any person is looking, if, it, if it's a side profile, it won't pick up that it's a face. Even if it sees one eye pretty well, uh, like a three quarter view, uh, it still won't pick it up. Um, but when they, once they look at you, it picks it up wonderfully and tracks it amazingly well. Um, so it's a nice feature to have. Now, the one downside to it is you have no way, you hit the down button here, you cannot change, when you have this on, you cannot not focus on that face right now. There's no way to focus on anything else. You have to go on the menu. You have to come over to, I believe it's the third menu. No, it's the fourth menu. Come over here to face detection. You have to turn it off. Once face detection is off, now I can move my green box wherever I want. I can put it on our face if I want. There we go, I'll focus on that. And then I can slide it over here to the color cube. Uh, and then, you know, I can center it. Oops. That looks about centered, so you can center it and, you know, fly around the room. Focus on anything you want. Just toss a lens cap down there. So that's, lens cap's pretty close. So you can see how it works. Um, now, which brings us to another point, focusing speed. Um, it is very fast for a Fuji. Um, I'm a former, former OMD owner, uh, which was a very fast camera as well. Uh, without having them side to side, it's hard to say if this is as fast as an Olympus system. Uh, remember, it's moving bigger lenses. Uh, it's kind of like the difference between full frame and, and APS-C is APS-C to micro four thirds. Micro four thirds to get a 35 millimeter lens, it's really a 17 millimeter lens. Uh, and theirs have more depth of field, uh, not just because of the inherent sensor sizes, but because they're 17 mils a 1.8, where this is a 1.4. Um, so, but that said, I've been shooting this for two days now, and it is amazingly fast in terms of its autofocus speed. It will literally just light up green, um, and a lot of the times, this is, this is lower light on purpose right now. Um, so, 
I don't see it. Let's put it on the ISO. We have the ISO jack. So Q menu's up here now. Uh, it's on auto 800. So we are going to dive into the menus really quick and fix that because that's going to bug me. ISO auto. And, oh, I know why, because I went in, I was trying to set custom functions for this to see if I could do something else that's annoying me, and it reset these to the default. So we're gonna go 6400, and we're gonna go minimum shutter speed. It's good to show you anyway. 125th, I do 125th because I shoot children and they're moving. Sometimes that's not even fast enough. I do 6400 because on these sensors, it's good enough. Default, I want it as low as I can go. Um, so there's your settings. So this is, some of the people have criticized Fuji in that, you set the minimum shutter speed and it doesn't change by focal length. Um, it's kind of how Canon does it. I'm pretty used to it. It's just nice to have working uh, auto autofocus. Sorry, auto ISO. Um, so, but you just saw where that is in the menu. So now, in this room, we're at 125th, 1.4, 2500. So you can tell it's not a brightly lit room. There's just window lights on. Sorry if you don't like the quality of the light in the video. Um, but that's because we're in, in my kitchen with no lights on on purpose. So now that, I'm about, let's put it this way, I can reach that lens cap. So it's not very far from me. You need to switch to macro mode to get it. Now the funny thing is, you can leave it in macro mode and it'll still snap on just about anything else in the room. It takes a little longer long distances. Um, but again, just double poke that and it pops out and see how fast it just focuses, focuses, focuses. Now 14 millimeters is a faster lens, so the XE, one, you know, it's not bad, um, but it's just the general feeling you get one camera to the other. I was literally finding myself, I thought it wasn't, you know, I, it would turn green and I didn't, it's, I didn't think it could do it that quick. So I'd refocus yesterday. Um, so it's just really fast that way. Um, so yeah, the switches and the dials are all much stiffer. The exposure compensation, everyone knows it goes to three. It's much harder to turn. Um, some people might actually not like that because it's harder to just easily get it to where you want to be. I never really had a problem um, bumping it on this camera with the uh, thumb grip. Uh, the shutter dial has obviously changed. They added 180th in there. They moved A around a bit. It's also stiffer. Um, they moved the buttons around in the back. They also made the buttons smaller. Not a fan of that. Uh, these are smaller. They're still bigger and not domed like the X100S, but they are smaller. Um, these are larger. The screen is much larger, much nicer screen. Um, trying to find a screen protector is going to be a little tricky. Uh, it doesn't seem like much fits it, but I'm, I'm working on that. Um, these are also smaller, the four ways smaller. Again, it all works. It's all better than the X100 for me. I really am not a fan of the X100 smaller layout, having shot an XE one for a while now. Um, but yeah, it's everything shrunken down a little bit. Um, you get the same dial. They move Q button up to here. That's a program programmable function button. That's a programmable function button. These are both programmable function buttons, kind of. Um, and then that's a programmable button up here as well, which is defaulted to Wi-Fi. Um, now, as I said before, face detect. It would be really nice if you could turn it off quickly. I wish you could put it on one of these buttons as a quick click off uh, toggle, basically. It'd be very convenient. Um, you can't. One of the other things that I, both cameras get wrong. Uh, I, as you guys know, I do a lot of landscape work. And if you go in, and we'll do it. So we'll hit Q. And see my fingers over the eye sensor. Q. And we go down here and we change that to 10 seconds. And then we go like this. Okay, so it's gonna take two seconds to take the picture. We know that, right? Two seconds, took a picture. Flip it off, flip it back on. And how long do you think it's gonna take to take this next picture? not two seconds. It doesn't remember it. Even with custom memory settings, I can't figure out how to make it do it. Um, so if someone knows how to do that, please leave a comment and teach me how, because uh, that would be fantastic. Um, but yeah, it doesn't do that. Uh, so that's a crucial flaw for this. But one of the nice things is, if we dial this to F16, and we dial this to that, and then we're gonna come into Q menu, and we're gonna set our ISO to, oops, Q menu, 200. Okay, and we're gonna do it to this camera too. So this one's on, we're gonna go F16, we're gonna go, and we're gonna dial these both to T actually, hopefully. So T, uh, and then we're gonna come in to Q button. See, I get confused because they're in different spots. Ah, 
So Q, dial that down to 200. Okay. And then this one needs to go to T as well. So you can hear how stiff that clicker is. It's quite nice, it's just different at first. So, what I'm trying to show you here is that this one tells you what the picture is going to be like and this one doesn't. This also remembers your last time setting from the last time you used T. This always defaults to a half a second. So as we go over here, and you'll see the meter on the side come way up. And I can go to 2.8 and watch, I don't, we don't really want to take a 30 second picture, but uh, let's see here, if we go all the way down, can I still make it too bright? Okay, two seconds, it should be way too bright. Okay, so here, we'll dial this one to 2.8 and see how bright it is? All right, 20 seconds there, so we're gonna come back to two seconds and I'm gonna bet Looking at that, that's what this is going to look like when we replay it now. It is reasonably close. And if you go back to here, it doesn't reflect that in the screen. It just does it over here on the dial. Now you can turn this off in the settings, in the, in the menu. Uh, so if you don't want it to do this, that's fine. But for landscaping, this is crucial. It shows you how to expose your image. Now, if you hit display on the back, you can also come over to here and you can see your high key graph there. Um, so now what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and take this and see if we go adding time to two seconds, it's way too bright. If we come way down here, you can see it slide right into, and now it's, it's limited by we're out of half. I really need to switch out of time. But so we're gonna take a shot here and it should be relatively close to what we wanted. And it is. So there you go, they fixed it, they fixed the histograms, they fixed the replay, fantastic. Um, as you can tell, white balance seems a little different, but different focal length lenses on both, so can't really be a judge there. As I said, the screen is fantastic. Um, the other thing is it obviously has Wi-Fi. Whoops, so it's doing ISO right now. Uh, oh, duh, because it. I have to play it back. So you do Wi-Fi, and then you break out your little fancy phone over here. Can you see my phone? Yes, you can. You go in here, and you say, yeah, my Packers are losing. Aaron's out. Uh, let's see here. We say, okay, and this is done over here. So, it says, start up Fujifilm app for digital camera, da 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 da, -da. Uh, And I think what we need to do is come out and go into settings and make sure we're connected to it, which we are. So we need to come in here and go back to here. No, yes. And, oh, I gotta hit connect, that's what it is. You hit connect down here, it's looking for it, it's now said whatever, so you say okay. So now, I it's asking me send individual image uh, and you can scroll through and pick the image. So we're just gonna send this one because we just did it. So we set okay and watch how fast it comes in over here. And it is already here. So it works very well as long as you remember to connect it. And you know, this is literally my second time doing it. So as I learn how to do it, it'll be very nice to send stuff over. Um, kind of fun to play with. Now there's no camera controls from there. Um, so that's, you know, some people really want that. It's not there. Um, but for what I want, this does what I want. Um, camera controls would be cool for landscaping, I suppose, but I kind of don't like taking my iPhone out to control things because it's something else you can drop and break. Um, so there's always that aspect. Um, so yeah, they fixed most everything. Uh, the one complaint I have is it doesn't remember to turn off two second mode when you uh, turn it off. Uh, they've given us better snap uh, click stops, if you want to call them that, on the on off and the exposure comp and the time. Uh, shutter speed, so that's really nice. Oh, one other thing, and that's I just remembered it. So you'll notice I have my eye sensor turned on because when I shoot, I want my eye sensor on, right? But when you hit replay, it's still on, right? And if we come over here, if we hit replay, mine is not on, okay? But if we hit the shutter for a second and come back to here, it's on. Because when you go through your display with the button on the back, you can set it here, so it's an eye sensor. We'll go through and, oh, wrong button. I'm supposed to be doing view mode, sorry. Uh, we go view mode to where it's eye sensor and you get eye sensor. And then when you hit playback, you hit view mode till you're at screen only and it remembers. So it's at eye sensor and then it's not. 
Okay, over here, you dive into the menus. Ooh, menus, always bad. Uh, you come down to, where is it? Somewhere in here, it might be in settings. Uh, da, da, there it is. All right, it's in, sorry about that. It's in the second settings menu at the very bottom. If you come down here, it's in sensor now because we were just in shooting mode, right? So in shooting mode, it's in sensor because I want to be able to use that EVF. So then we hit menu and go back over here and we come over here and we come over here and it's an eye sensor, which would make sense. But then if we hit play and we have the playback menu, that is playback, right? Yes. Okay, so with the playback menu, we hit menu and you get the playback menu. So you come down and I was hoping you come down over here, kind of like the button works over here. And you come over here and you say LCD only. Sweet, now it's LCD only. So I'm gonna come back out over here and this is now our actual live view and it's live view only. It has changed it. It is not allowing us to do one versus the other. So you're stuck. So now that's not good. They'll probably fix that in a firmware update. Um, but what I do want to show you is they do have this cool one here where it's EVSF only and eye sensor, which means if we go here, it should turn that screen off. It's hard to tell. And then, yeah, so we're going to go like that. So then the screen's off and then the screen's on. Screen's off, screen's on. So in theory, that could be a really cool power save mode. One thing I don't know is what happens when, uh, you know, you brush against your leg or whatever. Uh, but, and now I, I literally have to pull up to my eye to move this back. So hang on a second. I'm gonna go in, gonna go over, gonna come up, gonna go over, gonna go up to eye sensor and turn it back and then put it like that. So there you go. So yeah, that's a cool new feature, but the way they've laid it out, it doesn't remember for playback, which is a bummer. So some good things, some bad things, I'm sure that firmware. I really hope they fix a two second uh, delay memory in firmware or allow me to program it to a customizable thing. Again, if you know how to do that, please let me know because that'd be awesome. Uh, but yeah, beyond that, it's, you know, on paper, it's kind of a small update, um, but in use, it seems significant. Uh, it's just snappy. We were at Ikea inside, and yes, it's a well-lit showroom, but we were just walking around inside, and it was snapping pictures off left and right, um, and it was quite nice. So, so far, I like it a lot. Um, I'm quite happy with it, actually, and it just has been working well for me. So, yeah. Uh, good job. Fuji. Um, I'll be doing a full review after I've had it for a couple weeks probably. Um, I've already been shooting images with it, so we'll see. Uh, I'll be posting those. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to get an initial impression out and let you guys see what it's like. Oh, and one other thing is the screen is enough bigger if you have a bracket. This is an eye shoot bracket. Um, I actually had to mill out a tiny little piece right here um, to get it to work. So yeah you have to tweak that a little bit to get it to fit around the screen so that this will slide on here like that and sit in there right. Uh, so yeah. Uh, as for the 23 millimeter, I really like it. Uh, I wish it was a little smaller probably for pocketability reasons, um, but I like it. This is a much better package for me than an X100 in terms of getting the shots I want, uh, performance the way I want. Uh, yes, the lens is a little bigger. Um, so that's a sacrifice I'm making. Uh, but yeah, so far, incredibly happy. Uh, so hopefully this review helped answer some questions for you. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments and I'll answer them for you. Thanks a lot. Ben Jacobson for Ben Jacobson Photo with an XE2 initial impressions video. Thank you.